Hi everyone, here is Ali Reza Darakhshesh from Art Motion Studio, and today we are going to model the Ternary Tower in Shanghai, China. So let's jump in Cinema 4D and begin modeling. So to begin with, I'm going to create a cylinder, and I'm going to increase the segment. So uh, for the rotational segment, I give it a uh, 32. And for the height segment, gave it uh, something like 12. Okay, and maybe I get 36. And I give it 14 for the height. Yes, I think it looks okay. And the second layer in cat menu, I'm going to deactivate cat. So I don't need to have any cat. Now I'm going to give it a bulge deformer by selecting the cylinder and holding shift key and uh, clicking on the bulge deformer. Automatically, it will put the bulge deformer as a child of the cylinder. And now I can play with the, the straight parameter. For the bulge deformer, I need to drag it a bit up. I'm selecting the bulge deformer and drag it up. I'm dragging it uh, at 100 centimeter, but as you see here, the bulge deformer is not working correct because we are in the strength is in positive, but we should go in the negative direction, something like 70, and we need to activate the fillet. And secondly, we need to increase the height of the bulge deformer so that it covers the cylinder from the middle to the bottom of the bulge. So I'm giving it a 200 multiplied to is 400. 200 was the size of the cylinder that we had here. I just multiplied it by two, so we get half of the bulge covering the cylinder. Okay, but now we have just half of the model. What I mean with the model, one of these parts, I name it as a model. So now we just have half of the model, the top part, and we also need the bottom part as well. So for that, by selecting the cylinder and by clicking the Alt key on keyboard, I'm going to create my generator symmetry. But the symmetry is not positioned correctly. The mirror plane in is ZY. So this is the plane, but I want the plane, mirror plane, to be X, Z. So I'm going to change it, and then we get something like this. Now, I'm going to access mode, and I'm going to drag the symmetry down to minus 100. And so we have our model. But as you see, our model is too narrow. To solve that, I'm going to cylinder object and increase the radius. I think something 80 or 90 maybe. It seems that 90 is a good value for the radius. But as we see, we have square polygons instead of rectangular. So now I'm going to play with the cylinder subdivisions. So I'm going to decrease this and increase the rotational value, maybe 42. Yes. Now I think it's a good value, or maybe 46, 50, 14, 12, and now we have a more rectangular polygon instead of a square. And now we have the raw form of the model. And the next step, we are going to create the openings and the transition between open and closed state. To begin, I'm going to copy the symmetry. And I'm going to hide it for later. If something goes wrong, I have access to the form that we have here. So we don't need to create it from the beginning. So now 
I'm going to cylinder and I'm going to make it editable. And now we ha I have access to the polygon. Now I'm using the loop selection to select the polygons that I want for the opening. And I'm going to select these uh, polygons. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six should be enough. Before that, I need to make a copy of this and drag it out and uh, hide it. The reason I made a copy is that now I'm going to create the inner through the close position. So here we gave it uh, how much? We gave it, I think, seven or five or five. This is five. Yes, it was five. And now I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to hide this one and activate this one. But I have access to the uh, to the polygons before in the next room. So now I can make the opening state. So I use shortcut E for in extrude. I give it uh, something like 0.8, maybe. Yes. And I'm going to delete inners. So I have the opening situation. So, like. So now we have two uh, cylinders, so objects. One is in a closed position. Let me deactivate the symmetry to see it better. One is in a closed position, and the other one is the open position. What we're going to do now? Firstly, I'm changing the name of the object to close and name this one open. Now I'm going to hide the open situation and I'm going to close one and right click in rigging tag. I'm going to use pose mode. And what I want to change is the point. I want to change the point. Okay. Now I want to get rid of the pose zero, so I just delete it. The base pose is actually our closed state. Okay. Now I'm dragging in the open one instead of pose zero. So I have the closed and I have the open. Okay, and now when I drag this uh, sidebar, the strength, you see that I can switch between close position and the open position. Like, okay, and now I'm going from edit to animate. Great. Now I make a null object and name it model. Model okay, and dragging the symmetry beneath it, and by having close polygon selected and holding the shift key, I'm going to add a, a morph deformer. Okay, and for the pose move, I've given this pose move tag that we have, and now you can see that I can control the open and close state with the morph deformer, like what it before with the pause morph tag. There is some benefits by the morph deformer that now I can use the follow and fill to define where I want it to be open and where I want it to be closed. So I'm going to use a spherical field. Okay. And I'm going to drag it down. Do the Z axis. Something like that. As you see here in the center of the sphere, we have more opening and from getting uh, far from the sphere, we are getting the clue. But uh, we need to set it up a bit so it's too small. Well, maybe not. It's okay.
And I'm now giving it a curve here. So now I can control the transitions with the help of this curve. So I'm giving it something like, you see here, as I change the curve, the opening situation changes as well. I can also give it more opening or less opening, something like this. And I'm going with something like this, and I'm going to move it a bit inside. I think maybe it's better to increase the size of the sphere a bit. Okay, so that it so that we have more openings. And now we are going to use the curve to set it. Like this. Maybe too much. And radius. So. Okay. What else we can do? We can come to the spherical field. Okay. And now in the remapping, we have a linear remapping. And I can change that to uh, something, a curve. So now we have even better control of it. So I can make it opener or closer as I desire. And the inner, I can make it more open to get something, some results like this. Okay. And here in the morph, in the curve, I can now play with the curve to get the desired form. Now I think it's okay, the good result. We got from completely open situation to completely closed one. But as you see here, the opening is too, too wide, it's too open. To change that, we don't need to go back to inner extrude and do that manually because we have the spherical field and in the mapping, I can just decrease the maximum size. And you see, as I decrease it, this uh, will also be closer. Okay, I think 50% strength is good enough. Now, it look it looks much better, much much better. So now we have the form, but what we need now is uh, the window part, the glass part, and this is where we need this symmetry that we have done before. And when you know, I'm going to copy it and make it editable, I'm going to hide the model. Okay, and now. I am selecting the polygons that will be our glass part. And for that, I am using shortcut UL. One, two, three, four, five, six. Exactly where, where our openings are. And now I'm going to click V, select, and I'm going to invert it and delete the other part. So we have just the bottom part. Now, by selecting the symmetry and holding the Alt key, I'm going to um, put a connect object as the generator. And now I'm going to simply right click and current state to object. 
and I'm going to delete the commit. And now I have our glass part. I can simply just, I have made the glass material before, so I just need to drag the material on our connect object and rename it to glass. So now we have the glass part done, and I can put the glass part as a child of our module object. And now we have the glass, and we have our structure. I will name it to structure. And like, but here, the structure, you see that it is, it has no thickness. To give it the thickness, I'm going just to select the structure again by holding the Alt key. I'm going to use a cloth surface. And by cloth surface, I'm subdivisioning it. I set it to null. I don't need any subdivision, but thickness, I need uh, to give it some thickness. So after, let's see, 10. Maybe it's too much. I'm uh, activating this glass to have a better. Uh, understanding how much the thickness, thick, the thickness should be. So maybe two. Is it still too much? Minus two. It goes inward. No, it's not good. One. One, I think, is a good value. Yes. One is a good value. And now that we have put glass, I see that I have this feeling that the structure is the the frame are too thick. We need to come back to our surface and in fields, I'm going to increase it again. Yeah, 200%. Now it looks much, much better. Great. Okay, now we are done with the module. Okay, uh, we are going to clone it. But first, I'm going to select the pulse deformer. I don't want to see it anymore in our real port. So I'm going to act the act. So I just have the uh, model that I have created. So now I'm by selecting the model. By selecting the model, I'm going to use a uh, Alt key on the keyboard and make a clone. And in cloner, I'm going to make a linear clone. And I'm going to increase the height. Two four hundred. As you see here. Okay. But as you see here, I have this feeling that this should be taller. So we should work on the model, but we cannot go back to our cylinder because we need to process the whole thing again and again. So I'm going to use another trick, and that is in model. And I want to uh, work on all the glass and the cloth surface. So I'm simply going to uh, the deformers and I'm going to use the FFD deformer. Where is it? If I can find it. Uh, FFD deformer here. I'm putting it in the model. And I'm going to put it in a, firstly, I'm going to put it in close in here. And I'll put it to parent. Now I'll drag it up. Okay. I'm going to increase the well, segments in y direction. So, it's great. Now I'm going to select the over part. Point mode. I'm going to select the over part. When I drag it up, you see that it will be extended. Okay, but I'm going to put it in bulge here. 
so that it affects the close, the position, not the cloth surface. You see, when it is here, the FFP, it will affect the glass part and the cloth surface. Yes. And because of that, we get something unwanted, undesired situation here. But if I put the FFP beneath as a child of the closed position, okay, now we get rid of this uh, unwanted situation and still we can access and we can define and have uh, an effective whole uh, form that we want. And we are just going to mm, change the upper part. So the glass and openings are still the same. Okay, now let's see how much, how, how it is now. 150, okay, now activate the cloner. Now in cloner, I'm going to increase the 25. As you see now, we have a better looking uh, form. But as you see in the picture, we need one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we need four of these. So I need one more. And now I can also deactivate the FFT in the viewport so we don't see it anymore. And here we are with our first part of the uh, Turner Tower. Now we have three of them. So I'm going to rename it to Cloner Module. And now by holding the, by selecting the Cloner Module and holding the Alt key, I'm creating another cloner. And this time, instead of linear, I'm going to radial. And we need Three. As you see, we have three of these models. Okay. But to get the effect that we have here in the picture, so that each one has a different elevation, I'm going to use by selecting this cloner and I'm going to use the step effector. So, but I don't want to affect the scale, but I want to affect the position. And the position, not for, of course, in y direction. So I change it to get the desired position I want. And of course, in cloner, I need to increase the radius here. To open the tree a bit more. And now we have to play with the parameters of the step and the radius in the cloner to get uh, the effect we want. So I'm going to just increase it. Three hundred fifty. Let's see how it looks. And this angle is okay. This angle is too much, so I need to decrease it. Three, three hundred thirty. Yes, three hundred thirty seems to be a good value. Okay, we don't have any intersection here, and we don't have any intersection here as well. And our form is also okay. Now even we can use the step effector for the rotation. So I can rotate these, as you see here, to the position I want. So let's see, let's, let's look at the picture and say how they are positioned uh, together. So this, the tall one is, in the, when, it, when we look at it in the front, we see the back side of this one, and uh, this one is half closed and half open window. So to get there, this should be half open, something like this. So we need this to be uh, now cloner. Okay. 
No, that's better. And step effector. Okay. So, minus 5. 0. Or I can do something else. I can increase it. So I can see the back side of this one and half of this one. Okay. So let's increase this again. Okay. okay. Now it's good. And now in step effector. Okay. Now I can use the speed line to control the effect. But you see here, it affects both the rotation and the position. Okay. To just uh, control the rotation, okay, I need to firstly let me set the point to linear. Okay. To get rid of this, to control a better, uh, to better control the speed line to affect the y parameter and the rotation parameter separately i'm going to use for the cloner another step effector step effector here i name it step rotation and i name this step y so here i'm going to deactivate make it null and deactivate the rotation and here I'm going to deactivate scale and the position and just activate the rotation. Something like that. And now I, when I come to the effector and play with the spin line, I can just play with the uh, rotation of the step effector. So now I can come to the sorry, I can come to the parameter of the rotation step and Set it as I want. So this is in the front, this is side, and I want this to be completely from back side. Now I'm going to effector and just play with this value. Or maybe I need to rotate a bit more. So And now I'm going to just increase the rotation to get something I want. So this is from backside. This is, I see, can, I can see half closed and partial open, and this is completely open. So this is exactly what we wanted. Okay. To get something like this. And now if we have a, a cube here, I drag it down and I'm going to the object node and drive the axis. We see that these parts are not on the floor and we want them on the floor. So when we are sure about our model, how it looks like, what we need to do, I'm going, we need to uh firstly i'm going to make a null and i name it ternary tower ternary tower and i'm dragging the loner and everything beneath it so now when uh, when we are uh sure about how this looks and how it is we are going to uh by holding the, uh, the Alt key and selecting the ternary tower, I'm going to set a connect object again, and I'm going to rename it ternary tower, ternary tower. And from here on, I can just simply right click and select current state object. Ternary tower, you can get rid of this. And I can, I drag it also down. I'm going to hide it out. And we have all the model and everything, but as a 
editable object. But we have access to our settings here. So if something is not our uh, what we want and we want to change it later, we have access to, our, to the settings. So there's no matter, there's no problem. So here now I'm going to select the polygons, going to line mode, and I'm going to select, uh, sorry, I'm going to uh, surface mode with the polygon mode. I'm going to select UL and I'm going to select the bottom part. And by D, I'm going to extrude it down. And D, I'm going to further in further bring it down to the so that it touches the cube. And I'm going to do the same for this one. So by holding UL. So D, I'm extruding it down. And E shortcut D, I'm going to move mode and just drag it down. And now it looks just done. And we are finished with the modeling. But uh, the, there's just one step to do. And as you see, the whole thing is beneath the zero point. So what I can do, I can select this. Okay. And I'm going to access mode. And I'm going to front view and drag the axis down here. Okay. And now I'm going to zero it up. Now we are done with the modeling of the Turner Tower. I hope you have enjoyed this modeling process. And please subscribe to our channel and press the like button if you like the tutorial. Write down your comments. This will help us to make better tutorials for you in the future. And have a good time. Hope to see you soon in future tutorials.